Hey, I'm Mark Snyder. Uh, mates call me Wolfman, 42 years old, been riding BMX all my life. Uh, going to tell you a few stories. Uh, some of them may become legendary in the future. Um, yeah, so here we go. Okay, uh, the hammer story. There's a few different versions floating around. Uh, a few of them, I enjoy hearing them at parties and whatnot. Um, it's always fun. But yeah, Bean Lee. Uh, the dirt jumps at Bean Lee. One day, I rock up there. I just work night shift. It's pretty tired. And a few of my friends run up and say there's some motorbikes on the jumps. So I go over to the jumps, and here's these white trash idiots, uh, crusty demon of dirt rejects. And they're just like, Roosting up the jumps that we've spent so much time making, so I tell them to get off. Uh, they rode around a few times, been a bit of a smart ass. Then they went away, they came back, they roosted up the jumps again. And then I see them, okay, alright. So I just calmly walk back to my ute, grab out the hammer. One of them comes around to the BMX track part. He's looking at, looking at me all tough. And yeah, so basically I tell him to come back. He wouldn't, he gives me the finger. So I throw the hammer straight at him, last my weekend style, hits him in the back, knocks him off the bike. And uh, yeah, he gets back up, gets on his bike, never come back again. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's as that's as how I remember it. <laughs> There's a lot of other a lot of other theories out there, I don't know, but yeah. One day I'm building my vert ramp over at Shaler Park in Logan, South Brisbane. And a few fellas walk up and say, hey, just down the road at the local skate park at KP, uh, there's a skater. He's gone crazy on drugs or something, and he's hitting skaters over the back of the head. Oh, sorry, he's hitting BMXers over the back of the head with, like, uh, his skateboard and just whatever he's doing and just carrying on. So I go, oh, okay. So I just roll on down on my bike, down through the back pathway, down to the skate park, and here's this guy in the car park just, like, just going off and... Um, Corey Bowen tried to have a go at him and, and got punched and um, he wanted to have a, a go at him and uh, his mate like dragged him back into the car and they got in the car and this guy's just going off and uh, Brad Taylor was on like I think about 16 years old and he's sitting back in the crowd going what the hell's going on here and I walk up to this guy and he's chasing he's chasing Corey and his mates in their Falcon out of the park like they were just getting out of there because this guy's going crazy and he <laughs> He followed them out of the park, and when he's walking back, he walks past me, and he goes, what the fuck are you looking at? And I said, I'm looking at you, mate. And anyway, so I just walk up and just kick him in the nuts. And, yeah, um, he was pretty wired because he didn't feel anything. And I just went, holy shit, this guy's going to kill me. So probably about, for about 15 minutes, I was just basically just punching him in the head. And, yeah, he fell down a couple of times. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's just fucked. I can't tell it. They're hell about it. it. It's not gonna work. Um, well, I don't know. He was wired on drugs, you could tell. His his eyes, when you looked at him, they were, they were like shark eyes. They were just they were just black and, like, diluted. Is that, what is the name? The dilated? So, sorry. Anyway, yeah, just... You, you look at him and he, his eyes were, like, just dilated. And I was like, holy shit, this guy's seriously fucked up. And I'd be punching him a couple of times. Like, I'd punch him down, like, and he'd just fall on the ground. And he'd just get back up and come back. And just, I'd just punch him again, and he'd fall down and get back up. And after a while, like, it was just like, I was just, he was just spitting blood at me. He just, that's all he could do. He just spit blood at me. And I was like, all right. So, like, we, we tangled a few more times, and I knocked him down a couple of times. And a few of his skater mates just pleaded with me, just... Just, we, we think we can calm him down now. Just, 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 just go. So I took off. And anyway, the police rang me up um, that afternoon to go down to do a report. And I got in there and they're like, okay. And the parents of the kids that got his skateboard in the back of their heads, they were furious and they wanted this guy charged. So they asked me what had happened. And I told them that I went down there and I fought the guy. And they said, this one police officer, he said, he's there with a pen and paper. He goes, so where did he assault you? And I just sat there and I just went, 
Yeah. There. <laughs> I just busted my knuckles on him. I never got a punch. He never got a punch through. I just <laughs> wailed on him for a good 20 minutes. Yeah, so, um, no, but no, I actually seen him at the skate park probably about three weeks later. Uh, it was just me and him. He was skating, I was riding. And yeah, I think he was pretty sorry for what he did. I don't know if he got charged or anything. I don't know what happened after that, but yeah, so, yeah, a crazy night for him, I suppose. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> Bean Lee, when I first got there, wow, 97, 1997, uh, riding the park, uh, we all get down there, there's probably half a dozen of us, um, anyway, there was this young fella, he was about 11 years old, he used to ride with us, he was a bit of a local kid from a few streets away. And anyway, when we got there, there was these two drunk idiots. It was like a Saturday afternoon, probably like four o'clock in the afternoon there. And these guys are just wasted. And they start to sort of have a go at a few of the riders and the riders had a bit of a back chat to them. And they weren't going to do anything. They were just all bad tattoos and acting tough. And we just let it go. We just kept riding our bikes. And then when we're on the spine up the top end of the park, we hear this little, this little 11 year old kid, these guys, like these guys like 20 years old, they stole his bike. I mean, an 11 year old kid's bike. So we just go after him, and anyway, by the time we caught up to him, they knew we were after him. We only got like a, like 300 meters up Boundary Road, up past Bean Lee. And we roll up and they've already hidden the bike in the toilets at the park. And so I just walk up and go, Where's the bike? And these guys are so white trash. I mean, these guys are absolute just rednecks. So I just walk up and realize what's going to go on. They're just going to talk tough. So I just walk up and I just go up like I'm going to say a sentence. And halfway through the sentence, I just punch him in the head, punch him to the ground. And I just start kicking him. And his mate just looks at him. He just goes, you can't do that. So I just walk over him and just start punching that guy. And basically while I was punching these guys, um, they found the bike in the toilet. So yeah, the kid got his bike back and they got a beaten. And apparently one of, the, one of the guys said that his brother's going to get out of prison soon in a couple of months and he's going to beat the hell out of me. He's still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> that is a true story. <laughs> and they had, this is before tattoos. I mean, we're talking like felt pen fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Shit tattoos. Uh, that was, man, that was a long time ago. Was back when I was young enough to fight. Okay, um, this one's been getting around for a while. It's the whole, the, the whole, Corey Bowen, you can beat Nyquist! Story. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I was at the park one day. Corey was just, you know, having fun riding his bike, and there was a few sort of degenerates around there giving him a hard time. And they were just like, Corey was like getting pretty mad. And I just thought, you know, like I could see Corey, like he was thinking, you know, he was wanting to fight these guys and. He was talking to a few of his mates, and I could see the whole situation go down. And I thought, so what can I do? So I just, I just went a little left field. I mean, I could see these idiots, like the idiots giving him shit. And I thought, I could probably go talk to those guys, but the fuckwits. It's like a white trash thing. It's like, hey, you fucking rah, rah, rah. So I just got angry at Corey. Kicked his wheel. Told him he could beat Nyquist. You know, all this sort of stuff, and just got really angry. I mean, I got really angry at Corey for trying to start these guys when they had started him originally. And poor Corey was just like, he's only like 17 years old, and he's just standing there going, and I'm like 30 years old and all angry and just like hail and brimstone and just pissed off. And he's like, oh, okay, okay, I won't. But I'm just looking in the corner of my eye, and these pieces of shit that were giving him shit. The only reason they were giving him shit, because they were riders too. 
and they were just has-beens. And they were just giving Corey shit because he had the talent. So I just turned it around, and it was an awesome, you know, I just, I just, I just played it right. No one, there was no fights. The fuck what's left, you know, I don't know, probably become drug dealers or whatever. And yeah, Logan. But, um, yeah, Corey went under that, and there was just a fight-free day. So we all went and ride our bikes, had fun. Stuart Munro, known him for a long time, two decades. Uh, favorite part is road trip, Melbourne, 2000. Down to the shed, shed comp. Uh, I think he won Flatland, won $500. He really wanted to get out of that comp. I can't remember how old, how old he was at the time. I mean, he was pretty young and he couldn't afford to go down. So uh, I paid for him to go down and he had to pay me back later. So. Um, he went down, he won the comp, and yeah, yeah, I don't know what he spent the money on, I don't know, women, something like that, uh, but uh, yeah, i never seen a cent of it, so after many years, he gave me his 1995 Hoffman Big Daddy frame, and I said, yeah, that'll do, that'll do for the cost, I'll take it, you know, at the time it was probably worth, I don't know, 50 bucks, <laughs> it was shit back then, but now eBay is worth about a thousand. Thank you, Stuart Munro. <laughs> Daniel Teeny. Oh man, I can't even remember the year. It's got to be oh, 98, 99, something like that. Daniel Teeny's like, I'm going to learn flip fakies. And Clint Miller, at the time, had his backyard mini ramp going and hammock. And it was a pretty good mini ramp, so like I was like, all right, Daniel, I'll, you know, it was like a Tuesday afternoon. I says, after work, I'm going to drive to the north side, I'm going to pick you up, I'm going to take you to Clint's. Clint finishes work at like 4.30, you know, he's going to film it and, and all this sort of stuff, and you're going to pull it. He's like, all right. So I rock up, pick him up, throw the bike in the back of the ute, off to Clint's place. We get there, Clint's already there, Clint's getting his camera out, sort of thing, you know, getting the camera set up. <laughs> and uh, um, Clint goes to Daniel, he goes, oh, Daniel, um, while I'm just setting the camera up, you know, you can warm up a bit. And Daniel just looks at him like, uh, uh, whatever, okay. Daniel gets the bike out of the ute, just walks the bike up the back of the ramp. There's like a, a box jump rundown at the back of the ramp. He walks it up that ramp, walks up onto the deck of the half pipe and just sits there. Clint finally has the camera set up. And Clint's like, oh, I'm, I'm set up, but do you, do you want to have a few practice runs? Daniel Teeny just goes, no, I'm fine, just film. And I'm like, sitting on the ramp with him. I'm like, all right, okay, no worries. And uh, <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> no warm up, no nothing. He didn't even ride the bloody ramp. He just drops in and just flip fakies the other side. <laughs> just lands it, wheels, and just like falls off the back just a little bit. Didn't pull the roll back. <laughs> Get fucked. <laughs> That's just fucking awesome. I think he, uh, it had been raining that day, so like it, it was wet. And I, I think like he tried like 12 times. And every single time he slipped the roll out. And he finally got it. And once he got it, he went, all right, now I'll try flares. And then he just tried flares and it was just, oh, he was just like landing flat bottom and just axing himself, but absolutely talented rider. Yeah, awesome. Okay, um, drove down from Townsville around about 1994 on an XD Falcon with the Wilkinson Airline on the back. Hit up Bean Lee Bike Park. <coughs> Met Clint Miller. We've been good friends ever since. Uh, had a lot of arguments, but yeah, we've been good friends. And uh, he makes these potty videos. Um, all the old school guys know about them. Uh, they're really cool. But yeah, once I moved down here permanently, and I just, me and Clint, Stuart Munro, Colin McKay, you know, Glenn McLaughlin, we just were tight, 
tight group back in the day just riding. So a lot of the footage that was taken in the late 90s was of me. I'm a vert rider. Anyway, well, uh, I think it was like Proddy 7 came out. And I'm thinking, Clint's taking a lot of footage of me riding vert. So when the premiere came out, I, uh, I was pretty excited. And yeah, yeah, I watched the whole video. And uh, I was doing one clip of a nose pick to toothpick on his video. It even had it even it even had that he let, he stuffed up and left the left the date on the camera, but still put it in. But he didn't put any any of my vert footage. I was so pissed off. I was just like I just went home, grabbed all my proddy videos, and just threw them out of the fucking window <laughs> under the ground. I just threw the fuckers out. Uh, I was just pissed off. Uh, mind you, I think for about like. Uh, a few years later for my birthday, my birthday present was he, he just gave me all these potty videos. <laughs> Still got them ones. Haven't thrown them ones out. But yeah, no, I was pretty pissed off. <laughs>